One Man's Family, brought to you by Fleischman's Yeast. dedicated to the mothers and fathers of the younger generation and to their bewildering offspring. Tonight we present Chapter 4, Book 46, entitled Family Reunion with Marine Jack Barber. Now, it probably never occurs to many of you that when you buy a loaf of bread or some delicious rolls, that your baker really deserves your special thanks for the swell job he's doing right now. In spite of rationing and actual shortages, he's managing to keep you supplied with nourishing, vitamin-enriched bread. Yes, sir, the bakers of America are certainly doing a grand job. And by the way, speaking of rationing, as who isn't these days, I'll bet my last ration point that you good housekeepers are mighty glad to know that Fleischman's yeast isn't ration, that it's still plentiful at your grocer's. You just bet I'm glad to hear that, Mr. Carpenter. You see, I always use Fleischmann's yeast for all my baking. It makes such wonderfully delicious rolls and bread. Yes, ma'am, I know personally just what tender, delicious rolls and bread this fast-acting yeast makes. Not only that, but Fleischmann's yeast with the yellow label is the only yeast of any kind with both vitamin B complex and added amounts of vitamins A and D. And all of these important vitamins go right into whatever you bake with no great loss in the oven. So, ladies, when you bake... Always insist on Fleischmann's yeast with the yellow label. That way, you can not only give your family rolls and bread that are wonderfully good to eat, but rolls and bread which are also extra good for them. and intensely satisfying thing that's happened to the Barber clan in many and many a day was the arrival home of Jack from Quantico on a 12-day furlough. This young Marine officer is leaner and browner and holds himself with a straightness and a poise which Jack Barber of civilian life never knew. He has a brighter eye and a keener perception and moves with a litheness and sureness of foot which makes one think a little of a jungle animal. But his love of Betty and his enjoyment of his family and all things pertaining to the Barbers has not diminished one whit. In two days, he's fallen back into the lightness and the laughter and the loving security of family home life. He raids the icebox regularly and carries his six-month-old daughter, Elizabeth Sheridan, about in the crook of his arm wherever he goes, and hugs his mother and kisses Betty and sits with his father and back chats with his brothers and sisters. He does all the things he used to do, and yet he's not quite the same. There's an aloofness about him, a man apart, an unconscious feeling of one chosen from all the rest. But it's a wonderful day the family had together. A wonderful, happy, carefree day at the old family home. It began for Jack and Betty next door when they first opened their eyes in the morning. Hey, woman, aren't you out of that shower yet? I am, Jack. Well, get out of that bathroom so a Marine can get in there and wash his neck. His leather neck, huh? 7.30 in the morning and she's making jokes already. You know we're supposed to be over next door for breakfast in half an hour. I know it. I'm all dried off. A little powder and I'll slip into my bathrobe and be right out. Is he sharing that okay? Her eyes are open, but she hasn't said anything yet. Uh-huh. Takes her five or ten minutes to get her wits collected before she starts to bubble over. There. Bathroom is on yours, second lieutenant. And about time. Did you say good morning to Elizabeth? I was kind of scared, too. I looked at her, and she looked at me, and kind of a shadow crossed her face. I thought maybe she doesn't exactly care about Marines. Hey, Marines are this family's favorite fighting unit, aren't they, darling? Aren't they, Sharon? Hey, come on, say something. <laughs> That's better. Hi, Dutch. Hey, you see, she sobers right up the minute I speak to her. Uh-huh. I'm kind of awed by you myself. That second lieutenant business. We adore officers, but we're kind of scared of them. Well, I haven't got anything on but my pajama pants. How the heck can she tell I'm a second Louie? By the cocky way you walk and talk. Huh. Anybody'd know you were something special. Oh, yeah? You didn't know when I first came home. No, but that's different. I was more interested in you. Matter of fact, neither you nor Mom noticed a thing until Paul called attention to it when we got down to the dairy ranch. Well, all I've got to say is you were a dirty rat not to mention it. Oh, you think it's funny, do you? Hey, look, she's holding out her arms to me. Oh, 
Oh, she wants to flirt now. Is she holding out her arms because I'm her father or just because I'm a man? Oh. Take her, Jack. Sure. Here, keep the blanket around her. There. There, you see, she stopped again. Oh, give the girl a chance. She's got to get acquainted, doesn't she? You think she likes having me hold her? Of course she does. Yeah, but she looks so sober. She's just examining you. You're something new in her young life. There, you see? Hi, Elizabeth Sharon Ann. <laughs> hey, she's laughing for me. Oh, she really is a happy baby. Oh, more company. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Hey, be careful she doesn't bounce out of your arms. Oh, that doggone whirling dervish, huh? <laughs> she really has got more pep than a basket full of puppies when she wakes up. You better let me take her while you shower, or we'll be late for Mother Barbara's breakfast. Couldn't I take her with me? Under the shower? Oh, what's the matter with that? Hey, you don't treat infant doilies like that? Why not? I'll bet she'd like it. It isn't scientific. <laughs> okay, take your <laughs> offspring, woman. <laughs> Why do you keep calling me woman? Does it make you feel strong and masterful? <laughs> yeah, it's been so long since I've had a chance to lord it over a female, i got to take advantage of the few days at home. Okay, I don't mind. <laughs> Hey, she called me Dad. Did you hear her? I heard her say something. Say it again, Elizabeth. Say Dad. <laughs> oh, don't be such a dope. Say Dad. <laughs> was just part of her cooing and gurgling, Jack. No, sir. She definitely said Dad. Now, come on, baby. Say it again. <laughs> okay, I get it. Just another contrary female. Hey, that's my daughter you're swearing at. Me swear? <laughs> hey, you see? You hear that? Just as plain as the nose on your face. <laughs> Doggone right. You're a sweet kid. Just like your mother. Well, how about you getting your shower and some clothes on it? They're going to hate us over next door. Okay. It won't take me but a minute. Oh, wait a minute. I knew there was something I wanted to show you. And now who's holding up my shower? It'll only take a minute. Come on in the spare bedroom. Is it okay to be hauling ESA all over the house? Oh, sure. She's wrapped up. I forgot to show you this, and would Father Barber be hurt? Hey, it's an old-fashioned cradle. Uh-huh, with rockers and everything. It's an antique. Where'd you get it? Father Barber found it in an old shop out in the Richmond district. It was all to pieces. Then he brought it home? Not only that, but he glued it together and sanded it all down, and now he's polishing it. Beautiful wood. I thought they didn't believe in rocking babies anymore. Okay, then we'll put books under the rockers so it can't move. But this is definitely where Winston's going to spend his early life. <laughs> oh, so you know who Winston is, too? Of course she does. I told her all about it. How she's going to have a little brother to play with, and how she mustn't be jealous, because after Winston, there's going to be Paul and David and John and Marie Antoinette and Mary Fanny. Hey. Huh, you care? Let's see. That'd be Winston, Paul, David, and John, four boys. Uh-huh. And Sharon Ann here, and Marie Antoinette, and Mary Fanny, three girls. Uh-huh, seven. You think a second Louis and the Marines can support seven sons and daughters? But the war isn't going to last forever. What the heck, the minute you get out of the army, you'll be a great attorney, and seven children will be a breed. And another thing, where'd you get those names? Oh, gee, I didn't think you'd care. I just thought them up while you were away. I guess you gave me something to think about. Oh, sure. That's swell. Yeah, and I'm glad about you too, Annie. I don't feel half as bad about being away with you to look after Betty. <laughs> you sound more like a canary than my daughter this morning. Hey, what time is it? We've got to get down to business. Mother Barbara's going to be mad as hops if we spoil her good breakfast. Okay, let's go. I can be dressed and ready to go through the edge in ten minutes. Boy, I hope Mom's going to have some of those sour milk card cakes and homemade sausage. You just came in, Mother Barbara. Well, there's plenty of time. Can I do anything besides keep an eye on this sausage? No. The batter's all ready for the sour milk hotcakes, and the skillet's hot for the eggs. Uh-huh. And the coffee's just going to perk any minute now. You say both Hazel and Claudia arrived? Mm-hmm. We'll be in the library with Father Barbara. And the table's all set in the breakfast room? Mm-hmm. I just finished. Oh, I put on some of that Spanish marmalade with the wild honey in it. Did you mind? No. Jack will like that. Uh-huh. That's what I thought. He's so crazy about marmalade. They better get over here. They're going to be late. Well, they still have ten minutes. It's so nice that they could have their twelve days together over in their own house next door and, and still be so close to us, isn't it? Yes. But I don't know how we're ever going to get Jack up again. Oh, there'll be other furloughs. So why even think about it? Yes, of course. And things will go on just like they have. I don't think we've got very far away from Jack or that he's got very far away from us in those past five or six months. Do you? He's he's more of a man than he was. Oh, but that's good. Well, I'm so proud of him. I could hug him every time I see him. <laughs> I'm afraid I do. He'll get tired of me fussing over him. <laughs> don't you think he will? 
Now, look, Mother Barbara, it's understood, isn't it, that you're to go in and sit down to the breakfast table, and I'm to cook the hotcakes and bring in the coffee and things. But, Tiffany... Now, you promised. Yes, I know. And that's the way it's going to be. It's too bad this was Cook's day off. I don't think so. I like it this way. It's a shame Cliff and Irene couldn't get up for breakfast, too. Well, Dan Murray had offered to let Cliff it off. Yes, but he'd have had to do everything himself, and Cliff wouldn't do it. Oh, well, they'll be here right after breakfast. Hello, out here. Hi, Hazel. Well, my dear. Can you use any help in the kitchen department? No, we're very well organized. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, we can sit down to the table the minute the guest of honor arrives. Mm, the efficient barbers. Well, this kitchen doesn't look as though a lick of work had been done in it. Mm -hmm. We clean up after ourselves. That's one thing I learned from Mother Barbara. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're having this breakfast Sunday morning so Claude could be here. Of course. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, she'd have had to be on her way over to work at Treasure Island. Yes, that's the only thing that worries her about her new job. It, it takes so much of her time, she's afraid she'll lose her place in the family. Nonsense. As a matter of fact, I debated having the children and all over this morning. Oh, you couldn't have done that, Mother. Well, besides, they're much happier having their picnic breakfast out in our backyard. Well, is that what they're doing? Uh-huh. Claudia brought Miss Sorensen and the children over, and they're all going to have breakfast, picnic style. Goodness. What would Claudia do without Miss Sorensen? <laughs> Sometimes I wonder what I do without her. Uh-oh. Here they come. What's that? Uh-huh. Second Lieutenant of the Marines, Jack Barber, Betty, and Baby Marine, Elizabeth Sharon Ann, are coming through the hedge. Well, run in and tell Paul and Father Barber to get ready to sit down the table. Okay. I'll carry the glad tidings. Claude, you have to climb around the tail and wings of those big Boeing clippers? Aren't they the biggest things? <sighs> Seems to me what Pan American Airways needs is a man on a flying trapeze to do the sort of jobs you describe. Oh, there's ways and means of doing everything. I'm finding that out, Dad. <laughs> make way, make way. Teddy Barber reporting. <laughs> well, advance and give the countersign. The countersign, Major Barber, is soup on. <laughs> ah, that's the most appetizing countersign in many a day. What are the orders of the day? <laughs> well, the orders from the kitchen, sir, are to get yourself in readiness to storm the breakfast room. The immediate object is to take the breakfast table, loaded down with sausage and hotcakes. <laughs> the worthy military objective in anybody's language. <laughs> <laughs> A further information states that Second Lieutenant Jack Barber and family are advancing through the neighboring hedge and that immediate action is indicated. <laughs> Teddy, you sound like you were studying to be a whack at least. <laughs> huh? uh, Jack and uh, Betty are on their way over. Uh -huh. Are you folks all ready to sit down to the table? Not only ready, but willing and able. You know, Paul, you never had such a good appetite as you have now. Is that good? Oh, it's perfect. I, I was just... Hey, hey where is everybody? Oh, there he is. In the library, Jack. Hi, Dad. Good morning, Hello, Paul. Hi. Hey, Mom says, why isn't everybody down at the breakfast table? Hey, aren't you going to speak to your sister? I don't speak to sisters. I kiss them. Oh, please. <laughs> the Marines kiss gooey, don't they? <laughs> All servicemen do. Their mouths water so at the sight of a pretty girl, they can't help it. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your daughter you've got under your arm? Oh, yeah. Hey, she called me Daddy this morning. Oh. She did, too. Come on, honey. Say Dad for me. <laughs> oh, come on, come on. Come on, say it. <laughs> hey, you see? You see? <laughs> What is that? Elizabeth Sharon Ann called me Daddy. Uh, daddy. <laughs> okay, okay. Just a cynical group of civilians. Civilians don't believe in anything anymore. Uh, Marines do. It's all gone right. A Marine's got plenty of ideals. And what's more, he's got the brawn and the guts and the nose to put them over. Okay, Sharon, I won't say another word. Okay, Mom, we're coming. Well, you'd better. Or I'll throw the whole thing in the refuse bale. <laughs> Mom, you're a success. Oh, am I indeed? I never ate a better breakfast anywhere. In fact, I've never eaten a better meal anywhere. Yeah. Well, that's one thing your mother can still do, cook. What do you mean, one thing? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't want you on my softball man. <laughs> oh, come on, Jack. You're not finished yet. We'll have another hot cake. Okay, I will if you will. Oh, Jack, you can. The heck, I can't. Woman, since I've joined the Marines, I've acquired capacity. <laughs> Man with the rubber stomach, huh, Jack? And the digestion of a buzzard. 
Betty, your soggy cakes and two-pound biscuits wouldn't faze me now. Well, I like that. <laughs> no kidding. I've got iron rollers and little sharp knives down there where my digestive apparatus used to be, and nothing gives me pause. Eat your way through an all-night Roman feast, huh? No kidding. And come back next morning for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Nice, fresh, made order hot cake. Oh, Jack, how can you? Hey, Teddy, you're going to eat a couple of these with me, aren't you? Oh, me? Well, I'm only the cook. Paul? Oh, look at me, my boy. Well, you're an old service man. Seems to me you should be doing better by your vittles than you do. <laughs> I do quite well, thank you. Or don't majors need as much to sustain them as second lieutenants? Dad, you'll keep me company, won't you? Huh? Don't let me deprive you of them, boy. <laughs> what the heck? There's five of them here. I could spare a couple. No, thank you, Lieutenant. No, thank you. Go on, Jack. Eat them while they're hot. Well, okay. And all of you sit and watch me. I'll show you what a hungry man does with food. Mm, golly, I like everything about you, Jack. Even your appetite. Oh. <laughs> well, hello, everybody. Huh? Hey, Cliff and Irene are here already. Well, good for Cliff and Irene. In the breakfast room, Cliff. Don't be silly. Irene and I could smell those hot cakes and sausages there out in the driveway. <laughs> what an aroma the barber menage must be giving off. Hiya, family. Hello, everybody. Hello, Mother Barber. My, it's good to see you, Irene child. The Clifford Barber's up bright and early. Oh, you're doggone right. We milked the bossy cars and nothing flat this a.m. Here we are. Hiya, Jack, old pal, old kid, old second lieutenant. <laughs> doggone good. How about sitting down and swallowing a hot cake with me? Oh, don't mind if I do. <laughs> Bring on another plate, Teddy. Another plate coming right up. How about you, Irene? Oh, golly, no. I had one breakfast already. Well, sit down here, child. At least you'll have a cup of coffee. Oh, yes. Hello, Betty. Hi, Irene. Goodness, Father Barber, you look alive this morning. Huh? Is that supposed to be a compliment? <laughs> oh, sure it is. I don't know when I've seen you look so smug and self-satisfied. Huh? You look exactly like a quotation I used to have hanging in my room. It said, God bless our happy home. Yes. And that's exactly how I feel this morning. God bless our happy Here home. Here you are, Cliff. Stack of hot. Oh, man, oh, man, when you look at those hot cakes. Oh, uh, modicum of butter, Clifford. Amen, brother, amen. <laughs> and a soup song of maple syrup, perhaps? Mm, pour it on, son, pour it on. Soup song and all. <laughs> <laughs> Cliff, you and Jack make the finest team of big feeders I've seen in many a day. Who well, wouldn't be a big feeder with this kind of food? Sausage, Cliff? Slap it on the plate, Teddy. Stand on no ceremony. <laughs> oh, yeah. Goodness sake. Oh. What's the matter, Irene? The way you go with that food, you're going to give your family the idea I don't feed you. Oh, no, don't get that idea. Irene throws me a bone every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not fair. Irene's one of the best cooks in the barber family. Oh, are you telling me? Last night she whipped out one of the widest and tallest and tastiest raisin cakes with boiled frosting a man ever sunk his teeth into. Then why not give the girl credit? Oh, I tell her how good she is all the time. I've got to break the monotony once in a while. Huh? Having the man you love telling you how good you are never gets monotonous to me. Not to me, either. It never gets monotonous to any woman. Uh-huh. I think that one of the worst things about Jack being away is not having him here to say what a gorgeous creature I am every once in so often. <laughs> <laughs> but I write it in my letters. <laughs> Though that was the same as having it said with your eyes and with the touch of your hand and all that. There are a lot of women in the world today who know what you mean, Betty. A lot of us. Oh, yes. Oh. Uh, how much longer have you gone on furlough? Um, off again next Thursday. Yes. Leaving is the worst part. Oh, but it's worth it. Even one minute would have been worth the parting, but 12 whole days. Mm, it's been heaven. Look, I've just got the batter for six more hot cakes left in the bowl. Oh, I couldn't, Daddy. Jack? Positively no. Oh, letting me down. Oh, what the heck do you think I am? A doggone bottomless pit? <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't throw them out. Somebody's got to eat them. Okay, I'll be the goat. Buy up your six more hot cakes. <laughs> I'll bet you don't get them all down. Well, how much? Well, I don't know. You seem awful certain. Mm, certainly I'm certain. The dairy rice gives men a he-man's appetite. Just about any kind of work required of a man today produces a big appetite. That's why the country's consuming more food than ever. More men doing more active work. Yes, yeah, that and the fact that there's something like eight or nine million more men working today than ten years ago. Yes, that's true. More people with ready money to buy food. You know, I've just been watching you civilians. I think the boys in uniform eat on an average of twice as much as you people do. That is not counting Cliff. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jack, tell us something about yourself, huh? Well, what'd you do to get to be a second lieutenant in the Marines? Oh, you don't want to hear about that. Well, the heck we don't. Oh, yes, please. Ooh, just a regular old boot camp grind with a lot of extra stuff thrown in. He had to pass oodles and oodles of examinations to get his bar. Huh? What kind of examinations? Mm, written tests, oral tests, physical tests, intelligence tests. Everything you can think of. And passed them all with flying colors, huh? Huh. 
He was number three man in all his class. Hey, Betty. Well, you were, doggone it. Oh, it's just for your ears, you dope. No, sir. You're good, and I want all the world to know it. Huh? Number three, were you? Yeah. It doesn't mean anything. It does, too. It goes right on your service record. What's going to happen to you now that you're an officer? You're finished with Quantico, aren't you? Mm, yeah. Oh, go on and tell them. they got to know sometime. Huh? Jack. Now, wh- what does she mean? Oh, Betty, you have the doggonest way of upsetting things. Now they really think something's wrong. But, Jack, I... It isn't anything, really, except that now I've finished at Quantico, I'm... I'm going after my curled wings. Uh Uh-huh. And then he's going to be stationed down at Gillespie Field near San Diego. Hey, right here in California, huh? Oh, that's wonderful, son. Now, just a minute. What's this curled wings business? Those are the paramarines. Paramarines? Yes, the parachute contingent of the marines. You're you're to be trained as a a paratrooper? Hey, that's something. You... You mean you've got to jump out of the airplanes with a parachute? Well, look, Mom, it's one of the greatest honors that a marine can have to be chosen. There are only two men chosen out of each class at Quantico. Uh Uh-huh. And out of all those who volunteered for paramarine training, Jack was selected as one of the two. Well, do you like the idea, Betty? I... I'm so proud of him I could die. He's wonderful to do it. But, uh... But what in the world ever made you volunteer for, for, for such service, Jack? It's one of the toughest branches of the service there is, Dan. I set out to see if I couldn't make it when I first went to Quantico. And I did. But why? Well, look, Dan... There's two ways of going into the service. Either you shrug your shoulders and say, I'm in and can't help myself, so I'll just get along the best I can. That's one way. The other way is to go in with the idea that the more serious you take this war business, the more you train and work and develop yourself for the job ahead, the sooner we can lick it. Isn't that right, Paul? Right. Yeah, and that's the way I went at it. I had to go at it like that or just die of being bored and homesick and a misfit. No, I think you're doing exactly right, Jack. I'm proud of you. But... But why the parachute troops, Jack? Because that was the hardest. After you've passed all the physical tests for other branches of Marine service, then you take more and harder tests for the paramarines. If it'd been anything harder than paramarines, you'd have had to try for that, huh? What? I don't know. Maybe it sounds silly to a civilian. The heck it does. Oh, no. We're with you, Jack. It's just that it's hard to express how bad we ought to be related to a... Oh, please. I, I don't want you to feel that way. Really, I don't. It wasn't bravery or cockiness or, or anything like that. It was just a hard job to do, and somebody's got to do it. And, and I didn't feel I could pass it up if if they take me. Yes. Good boy. Gee, fella, I'm glad for you. I mean, that you made it? Yeah. You say you're going to be down at Camp Gillespie? Yeah, there are two training camps for paramarines. Camp Gillespie, California, and New River, North Carolina. I thought for a while I was going to draw a new river. Mm, But you didn't. Now when you get some time off, you can come home. And there's no reason why you can't come down to camp once in a while. How long is the course? Five weeks. Do you know anything about the training? Not much. You get lots of hardening up training. They teach you more and more judo. That's the old jujitsu wrestling. And I know we start our training jumping in captive parachutes from towers. Oh, yes. I've seen some of it in newsreels. Uh Uh-huh. The fifth week, the new recruits make six jumps from planes. At the end of four weeks, you start jumping from planes? Yeah. And after the sixth jump, you get your inseam, the curled wings. Uh Uh-huh. And then he's a full-fledged paramarine. Golly. And after that? One of two things will happen. Huh? Yes, Dad. Active service, which I'm hoping for, or... Or I'll be held to one of the camps to help train other recruits. Active service? Where, son? Hmm, having the faintest idea, Mom. You know, Paul, one of the most interesting things about paramarines is that the officers are really line officers. In the air, you're a paratrooper, but once you hit the ground, you take over just like you were in the front lines of the battle. And you mean front lines. Uh-huh. Golly, I can hardly wait for Winston to get here. Uh-huh. What brought that up? Huh? So I can tell him what a gorgeous man he's got for a father? <laughs> oh, Betty. Well, I think so. And I'm going to teach every one of our seven sons and daughters to think so, too. (laughs) Seven sons and daughters? Yes, Dad. You didn't know it, but you're going to be the grandfather to, um... uh, What are their names? Elizabeth Sharon Ann and Marie Antoinette and Mary Fanny for the girls. (laughs) (laughs) And Winston, Paul, David, and John for the boys. Oh, goodness, you are looking into the future, aren't you? Well, I always say there can't ever be too many children in the family when they've got a father like Jack to be proud of. (laughs) Oh, boy, have you got a reputation to live up to. And Jack's just the man who can do it, too. He can, huh? Doggone right. Well, it looks 
as if Clifford really put his foot into it this time. During a family chat, he referred to women as the weaker sex and immediately brought down upon his head the combined indignation of Hazel and Claudia. Weaker sex, indeed. How can you say such a thing, Clifford Barber? Why, women are doing even better at some men's jobs these days than men themselves. Oh, yes, all they needed was a chance to show what they could do. I'm really surprised that you're being so old-fashioned, Clifford. Well, hey, now, lay off. I didn't originate the phrase. I was only quoting. Well, by the way, who did originate that term, weaker sex? Some man, I suppose. Well, I don't know exactly, but Shakespeare came pretty close to it in Hamlet. Frailty, thy name is woman. Yes, and wasn't it that very gallant gentleman, Lord Chesterfield, who said women are to be talked to as below men and above children? (laughs) Yes. But thank goodness all men aren't that blind. One of the nicest tributes to women I know of was written by a man. Matthew Henry, I think. I don't know all of it. Do you, Paul? You mean the one about uh, woman was made of a rib? Mm Mm-hmm, that's the one. Can you quote it? Maybe I can remember it. The woman was made of a rib out of the side of Adam, not out of his feet to be trampled upon by him, but out of his side to be equal with him, under his arm to be protected, and near his heart to be loved. Oh, I like that, Paul. Do you have a copy of it someplace? Yeah, remind me later. I'll look it up for you. Oh, and maybe you'd like this one, also written by a man, John Van Brew. Whilst there is a world, tis woman that will govern it. Well, maybe so, but... Doggone it, I just hope women won't ever forget that their real worlds are their homes and family. Uh, don't worry about that, Clifford. Even though many of today's women are doing a man's job and doing it as well as any man, a woman's first and most important job will always be the proper feeding and care of her family. And she's doing that job well, too. For instance, today, when it's so much more difficult to plan nourishing, well-balanced meals, you'll find many wise women depending on Fleischmann's fresh yeast to help add extra vitamins to their family's diets. You see, Fleischmann's Fresh Yeast with the yellow label is the only one on the market with both vitamin B complex and added amounts of vitamins A and D. Those are the vitamins, you know, which are essential to our good health and well-being. So if you or other members of your family need extra vitamins, give Fleischmann's seven-day vitamin pickup a chance to help you. Just take two cakes of Fleischmann's Yeast every day for seven days straight. You should notice real benefits in just that short time. And for a really pleasant way to take yeast... Drink a delicious vitamin cocktail, Fleischmann's yeast in cool milk, water, or tomato juice. Yes, drink it, America. To your health. You have just heard Chapter 4, Book 46 of One Man's Family, written and produced by Carlton E. Morse for the makers of Fleischmann's yeast. Chapter 5, entitled Another Weekend at the Dairy Ranch, will come to you next week at this same hour. time you buy puddings, ladies, ask for R-O-Y-A-L, Royal Puddings. Serve a smooth, rich, delicious Royal Pudding tomorrow, and find out for yourself why women from coast to coast buy more Royal Puddings than any other kind. One Man's Family comes to you from California. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>